a year or two in, somebody came to the pumpkin stand and he was a friend of the family and he offered me 20 bucks in exchange for all of these pumpkins that he wanted to take, but I had to take the deal right then. He was applying pressure. He was saying, this is the money I've got, take it or leave it. And I remember saying, hey, no. I am Robin Zander and welcome back to another long-awaited, hopefully you've been waiting for it, episode of Ask RPZ. You ask questions, I answer them. Sometimes I have a guest and we answer them together. The first question today is, for somebody who is just starting a digital media agency, what are a few essential skills that they should perfect or hover over or focus on? And I'm gonna actually extend this to anybody running a business. There are a few core essential skills that anybody who's running a business needs to have. One that I think is too often glossed over that is required to run a business of any kind is sales. Somebody has to be the salesperson at an organization. And I don't mean the awful used car salesman, pushy type of sales, but I mean the kind of gravity, the kind of willingness to deal make that actually gets things going. I have a rule of thumb, which is if you're in a room full of people and you don't see the person responsible for sales, for generating income, that person is you. You're looking in the mirror. Sales is complex. It's got a really bad reputation and I don't think that it should because actually what sales is, is providing value to people who want what you are offering. It is giving more than you get to people who are interested already in getting what you have to give. I have uh, another rule of thumb about sales. This was offered to me years ago by Professor BJ Fogg at Stanford, author of the incredible book, Tiny Habits. Don't try to sell the unsellable. Don't try to persuade the unpersuadable. Trying to push a rock uphill and tell people that they need something that they don't think that they need is a waste of your time and theirs and a waste of your effort. Instead, find the people who want what you are offering and get it to them more quickly, get it to them at better value, get it to them faster, get it to them differently than anybody else. Another core skill that anybody in business running a digital media agency or otherwise needs to work on is learning. The world is moving faster and faster and faster. I wrote a book about it called Responsive, what it takes to create a thriving organization, but really what we're talking about is the world is moving so fast that the people and the organizations most likely to survive are the ones who learn, are the ones who can adapt and change most quickly to the changing circumstances in the world today. Double down on the ways in which you are a learner. For me, in my personal life, I'm an acrobat, I'm an athlete, and I've been studying movement since I was at least eight years old, if not younger. Anything that I do in movement, applying it to what I need to learn in business. The best way to learn is to fall in love with the process and to find a thread, to find an idea that you particularly are interested in and just follow that thread. The third criterion that I think really matters in building a business is leadership. Sometimes as a leader in my day-to-day -day life, I talk too much. And actually the job of me in that state is to talk less. Growing up as a, as a young kid, I didn't talk enough. I did not lead enough. And so it has been the project and a hard won project of the last 15 years to learn to lead, to learn to step up in a meeting and to take control when nobody else is going to, because someone's got to do it. And I'm that someone some of the time. You can practice it in your personal life. You can practice it in your friendship. Anytime you're saying, hey, friend, I wanna go out and get a meal, why don't we go to this place together? Rather than, where shall we go together? Or rather than not reaching out in the first place, that is a form of leadership. Taking a little bit of the load off of somebody else and taking it onto yourself, that is a form of leadership. The next question is, what is the hardest deal I've ever had to close? Whether this is buying or selling, what kind of pressure did it create and how did I go about handling that pressure? I wanna actually start with a story, which is when I was four or five years old, my dad brought me outside and had me start planting seeds. And he had this vision that we were gonna start Robin's Pumpkin Patch. I, for many years, sold pumpkins in preparation for Halloween to all of the neighbors. But I remember a year or two in, somebody came to the pumpkin stand and he was a friend of the family and he offered me 20 bucks in exchange for all of these pumpkins that he wanted to take. But I had to take the deal right then. He was applying pressure. He was saying, this is the money I got, take it or leave it. And I remember saying, hey, no, I need to calculate. I need to figure out if that's worthwhile. I'm not just gonna say yes because you are exerting pressure. And that moment of him pressuring me and me stepping into 
into my own authority and saying no has always stuck with me. I don't respond well to somebody trying to force their way of doing things, their opinion about how something should go onto me. I have so many little moments, and this is such a great question because it inspires me to think about these little moments of sales in my life. I remember when I was running Robin's Cafe, learning how to negotiate with vendors. We had a dozen different vendors at the cafe, and each of those was its own separate negotiation. I'll share a couple of stories, but I think my biggest reflection on negotiation is that it takes practice. Deal making is a lifelong practice. Deal making does not have to be I win and you lose or you win and I lose. There was a major deal that we closed last year at Xander Media to create one of our biggest ever commercials. We had a handshake agreement, but the signed details were coming through and it was the first couple of days of holiday break. I was ready to sign off and these terms and lawyer logistics kept coming through and coming through and coming through. And I remember phoning a friend and feeling really frustrated. My friend said, hey, you can walk away from this deal or you can spend time right now handling it or you can handle it after the break and maybe the deal falls through in the interim and maybe it doesn't. I ended up working two or three extra days into the break and at the time kind of felt resentful. But after the deal had closed, was so glad that I had focused on the thing that I knew to be the most important, which was making sure the client was taken care of and moving forward with this very, very large video production. I think there's a righteousness in that. I ought to be able to do it easily. It ought to come to me easily. And why ought it? I don't deserve for uh, good things to happen to me. It takes work and oftentimes it takes a lot more work than we think it should. That's one piece for me, one lesson for me about deal making is you have to leave ego at the door. It's really important to have clear boundaries and that's a conversation for another day, but deal making means leaving my ego, my opinions at the door so that I can come into the conversation really clean. When I started Robin's Cafe, I very quickly learned in the first couple of weeks by the way, you should watch the video about Robin's Cafe. I would have a lot more vendors, people who were selling us the goods, you know, the espresso beans, the avocados, but that was one vendor. Another vendor supplied us cold brew coffee. Another supplied us bananas. Food vendors, because the cost of food changes day to day, week to week, etc., change their prices. And so very, very quickly, I found that there was just a ton about restaurant ordering that I had to figure out and negotiate. Or if I didn't want to spend the time negotiating, train somebody on my staff to negotiate or accept the current price. I ultimately did leave a fair amount of money on the table because I was not on the phone with all of my cafe vendors every single day negotiating the price for tomorrow's order. But it was really an interesting lesson for me in when vendors changed their prices or supplied us a case of 60 avocados and all of the avocados were off, it was on me to call, tell them that the avocados were off, send them back and get a fresh case of avocados and get a full refund but it took the work of negotiating it to make it happen. Good things don't just fall on my plate. The good things would come, but they would come from hard work. All right, there are so many more questions. I've only gotten through two. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Ask RPZ, where I talk about behavior change, movement, learning, and business. You keep asking questions, I'll keep answering them.